So the big question is this, how do small business owners like us grow our leadership, develop our teams and scale our business in a way that allows us to get our products and services out to the world yet still remain profitable? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Bradley Hamner and this is the Club Capital Leadership Podcast. Welcome to The Bottom Line, a new weekly podcast series that we drop every Thursday to complement our weekly Monday podcast interviews with the industry leaders. These podcasts are going to be designed to give you short, impactful, and value-driven information that you can start using right away in your business. I value your time and attention and will do my very best not to waste it. Just get what you need and go. So with that, let's get into today's episode. Are you an agency owner looking to grow your revenue, increase your bottom line, and better manage your taxes? Club Capital is here to help. Club Capital is the largest accounting and advisory firm for insurance agents in the country, providing monthly accounting, tax strategy, and CFO services. Way more than bookkeeping and your everyday run-of-the-mill tax prep, Club Capital is focused on providing financial and tax advisory services that help you plan and forecast your agency's performance. Their financial dashboards and agency forecasting tools help you better understand your agency's historical performance, create and measure future targets, and see how your agency compares to your peers around the country. Imagine what it would be like to understand the impact to your bottom line when deciding to hire a new employee or forecast the impact rate changes or commission rates will have on your business. With over $200 million in tracked annual revenue and $140 million in tracked annual expenses, Club Capital has the data and the team to help you make better informed decisions for your agency. They will help you turn that back office stress into the backbone of your agency's success by giving you the tools to take your agency and your leadership to the next level. Visit club.capital today to book a solution overview with one of our business consultants. Club Capital, way more than a CPA firm. All right, brother. Um, let's. Uh, we're going to do a, a quick one today uh, to be able to provide some value uh, to some people. So, what's a couple of things you got on your mind, bud? AI, man. I can't stop talking about. It. I can't stop using it. I cannot stop. Spec- like specifically, best practices like when it comes to ChatGPT. Uh, like I've, uh, I'm not even joking. Like I use it every single day of my life. <laughs> every single day what's of my been, life. Uh, what's been like one? one particular use case that maybe is out of the norm that people wouldn't necessarily uh, think about. Um, and, uh, and then maybe I'll share a couple too. Sure. So I, I have a, I have a team of people with ChatGPT. And what I mean by that is like, you know how ChatGPT has different chats, like you can't have multiple chats going on, right? So each chat has a, has a job duty. So like I have, CEO, GPT, CTO, GPT, UX, uh, UX, UI designer, GPT. Um, I have CSM, GPT. I have life coach, GPT, travel agent, GPT. Um, I, my prompts, prompt, like prompt engineering is a real thing. Like my prompts are probably two to three paragraphs long to give it as much context as, like, as possible. Yep. And the answers and the, and like and the things that I'm able to get out of it are just next level. Like, yeah, it's just like next, next level. And it's so detailed. Uh, it's so detailed. It's so thorough. And it's so applicable to me because of how much context I've given it. Um, that's one thing that I'm doing. And for example, for each of these decisions that I'm talking about, um, to get the conversation started, like what I'll do is that I'll say, uh, like for example, for UX UI, I I'm, I have it right in front of me right now. I said, describe the qualities of a of a UX slash UI designer and developer that creates effective websites and applications that turn visitors into customers, meaning that they create high converting websites. And then boom, it 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 gave me a list of like like the qualities that 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 that, that person would have. And then I was like, okay, you possess all, all these skills create a document that I can use to build a website for a virtual accounting firm that's modern, sleek, and, and converts a majority of, of its visitors into clients. And then, boom, it gave me an outline of everything that I had to do. Uh, and the reason I'm, I did that is because of the fact that I am actually building landing pages uh, for Club Capital for the, for the different lines of services that, like that, we, that, that we have going. Uh, and yeah, like that's just one use case scenario. But for example, the fact that I first told it like what skills it should have, 
was great because of the fact that now it knows, okay, I got to give a person an answer that incorporates all of these skills rather than me just saying, create a document. If I just started with create a document that I can use to build a website for a, a virtual accounting firm, it, it would have just given me some general, you know, website. So um, I, one thing I really like the way that you've done yours, because I had not really kind of thought about it that way is organizing I've thought about the chats as like individual chats based on one particular thing. And you're saying what you're doing is you're actually organizing that you're almost curating everything around, say, travel, as an example, stays in one yes. chat. Right. So that makes sense because it, it it's my understanding. It does not learn from all of your chats in your account. Correct. It's only in that one chat. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's absolutely right. And um, like for example, I recently took a trip uh, to say Lita, like a tripping town in in Mexico, uh, and I just told it like, "Hey, this is my like." I can't even give you the prompt that I gave it, but I mean, it was <laughs> incredible. I mean, just the fact that uh, uh, basically I said, "Hey, I'm going to." Uh, Let's see, like, I'll tell you right now. Come on, where is the, where is the travel agent? I, I, I literally call it travel agent GPT, by the way. Like, like whatever I want. And actually, look, I'm not even going to waste time like with the prompts right now. But let me tell you, like, my like my thought process behind ChatGPT. And by the way, ChatGPT is not the end of the deal. Yesterday, I was at a conference in, uh, in Mexico City that talks about all the tools in AI and then the what could potentially be the next step, which is general artificial intelligence, which is what we have today. Like it's like being able to put intelligences that it's speaking from different aspects, you know, like uh like text to speech, text to code, uh text to image, text to text, which is what ChatGPT is. Uh, and having one super intelligence, okay, like a general intelligence. Yeah. Um that can put all that together. So but anyway so whenever I think of artificial intelligence, I think of it as, hey, what, what's my end goal? Do I have the skills to get to that angle today? If I don't have the skills, what am I missing? And if, the, and if what I'm missing is, for example, like a CTO or a UX UI designer, then make AI that position that you're missing. Like that's why I have the different chats uh, in each chat has a job function uh and i would say that it worked out great so far and i've been operating like this for the past two weeks and in those two weeks like i built out business plans like i've I built out uh literally directions for a commercial uh like scripts like not just the script but then a document that says like this is what i want the piece to look like and everything uh and, and that's for a like another um, another new business that we're launching at I Club Capital. Built all of that. And by the way, when I was like, "Hey, when you're building, when you're building uh, the script for the commercial, use the Simon Sinek model, uh, which is like the why, how, what." So I could supposed to say, "Hey, this is Club Capital. We're not offering yada yada yada." It's like it's actually you know pitches to, to you in a way that. It just hits you at an emotional point and at a logical point as well. And, and it was just like, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Or if I did read a book on Simon Sinek and then decided to sit down and do this, it would have taken me weeks to come up with the script. And I just built yeah. it in maybe like five or six months. You know? So I want to give uh, people a couple, a couple of use cases for, uh, that I've used it for. So I had, uh, I've had a couple, so a client sent me a Voxer message and said they're launching a new product themselves. And they sent me the post that they were going to make like a screenshot of the post. And then they sent me the, basically the copy. And one of the biggest things that I noticed about the copy is it did not have the problem that the thing was solving that they were launching and then, so the kind of the model, model, you know, this is problem, agitate, sol solution, right? Like you, you kind of go through that model. And so I, I, I copied their, 
Voxer threw it into chat GPT and said kind of that way and said, hey, um, uh, write this better more succinctly using problem, agitate, solve. And I said, hey, uh, you left out this, send it to them. And they were like, what? That's so good. <laughs> you know, and that, that what, what's cool about <laughs> it is that that whole communication happened turned around in like five minutes you know and it's just it's just a much well more well-written post I could have sent him back that idea to hey you need to write this in this way and that would have been a task instead hopefully I provided more value to say hey this is the this is the structure the way that that copy needs to be written and then I just use chat GPT to turn it around in 90 seconds so that's one use case a second use case is my son, I give like a total random one, but my son was trying to come up with wiffle ball names. And so he threw all of these different names. We, we threw it into chat GPT and, uh, and I said, give us a bunch of different wiffle ball names using the following things. And it sent out some pretty cool ones, you know? Um, so it was, it was, it was creative. I mean, it, it helped to inspire a little bit of inspiration, you know, put some inspiration into some ideas. And then the third one is I had, I had a client reach out uh, needing a request. And I, I don't want to get into the details of the request. I mean, it was something totally legal and everything was good. It was just something that normally I would have to go back to the office, get in front of a computer, write it, send it to myself, sign it, send, you know, send it back. I mean, the whole thing would have been roughly 45 minutes. So I took her text, threw it into chat GPT, took that and said, gave chat GPT about a two sentence prompt that I uh, uh, dictated in my phone while I was waiting in line at Kava to get to get lunch. It sent it back and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Copied it, pasted it into a Google doc, took the Google doc, saved it as a PDF on my phone, sent it to GoodNotes, signed it on with my finger, and I did all of this and turned it around before I even got up to the line to order. And what's cool about that is more so what the customer turned around and said was like, oh my gosh, how did you turn that around so quickly? And so just using some of these tools makes the experience so much better for the clients because normally that would have been like a couple hour turnaround or I might even have said, yeah, I'll get that to you. I'll get it to you tomorrow. Instead, I turn it around in like four to five minutes. And I think that that's some of the use cases that are very practical down to earth. Again, there's no reason for you and I to get into this debate. Let Elon Musk and Sam Altman and those guys get in the debate about whether or not AI is going to be good for humanity. That's not what you and I, <laughs> like that. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to say I've told everybody. I'm going to learn to serve. I'm not going to get dumped by this wave. No way. I'm not going to get dumped by it. Yeah. I mean, was the, was the, when people were riding in, in buggies, was the car a good invention? You know, it was fire a good invention, you know, and, and then like, it's, it's not even a debate, but let's not even go down, like go down that rabbit hole. What I will say is do not be afraid of artificial intelligence. If anything, embrace it and realize that it's a tool and like any other tool, you're only going to get good at it the more that, you get, like the more that you use it. Hundred percent. And if and if you want to be selling and not use it, I can only tell you that you you will be left behind by competitors who are using it. So whether it's an agent that's listening to this or other business owners, encourage people in your team. To utilize these tools. I mean, ChatGPT, like, like you're only talking about 20 bucks a month. And let's say that you're a brand new beginner, you have no idea where to get started. You can literally ask ChatGPT, I am brand new to ChatGPT. What are the best practices? I am an insurance agent. How can I leverage artificial intelligence to better run my agency? I'm an insurance agent that wants to create an ebook on to educate clients on life insurance. Give, like, create an outline that. It, you know, to educate clients that and you can get even more detail and be like that live in Huntsville, Alabama uh, that are typically like describe your ideal client into ChatGPT and then be like okay like cater, like cater the like the script for this ebook to this demographic right here boom throw it in 
it'll create it for you minutes. I mean, no doubt. Yeah. don't get left behind. <laughs> don't get left behind. I'll give you one last one that I've used. It's built on the back of chat GPT. So the, so, so, so the, uh, the, uh, what is it called? The API. So the API. they're using the, the chat GPT API. It's called Jasper AI. Have you seen this? Yeah. So what I love about Jasper is it's a browser install in Google Chrome and it follows me around in, in docs. And so instead of me having to go into what docs and sheets and, and um, uh, my email. So if I'm writing, if I'm in an email, instead of having to go to chat GPT in a separate browser, I can just use, uh, I can just tap maybe it's spacebar or something i can't remember anyway it's something like that and it's in there and then uh you're my notion brethren have you seen the notion ai that's in there too yes there man you're you're like you're the notion king man i yeah, gotta well, talk to you about <laughs> oh i love no i love notion it actually helps me i have these ideas especially like my solo episodes chris on fridays if i have this little you know this this, this thing that i want to share not all of them because chat GPT won't have my context, right? It just doesn't have context and perspective of like maybe what happened. But if there's ever a story I want to tell about something and I want to use the story as a metaphor or analogy for business, I can say, hey, write me a general outline about this XYZ story. And it at least gives me a couple bullet points to be able to make sure that I share because it actually kind of brings to life maybe a detail that I wouldn't necessarily have known, like, I'll give you one, people can go back and listen to it, but it was the one um, called Rembrandt in the Attic. Well, I'd heard that concept before for a long time. And so I just put it in Notion AI. I was like, hey, give me some of these stories where this actually happened. And it, and those stories, I didn't, you know, I just didn't have to like research it um, in, uh, in Google. It was just all right there. So anyway, there's some pretty cool use cases. All right, dude, is that the pod today? saying absolutely man um love this conversation i'm so excited as, as you can tell by the tone of my voice and maybe how fast i'm speaking but let's definitely make this a recurring theme let's definitely make ai a recurring theme because once again we're talking about a tool so don't be afraid of it and let's show people how we are using it let's also remember that chat gpt is just one of plenty there's chat gpt there's bard which google just launched recently and what I love about BARD is the fact that you have access to Google, aka the internet, where at ChatGPT, it stopped learning as of September of 2021. So some of the answers may not be as uh, up to date as they can be. Uh, so anyways, you can realize like I can I can cross collaborate between these two tools like BARD and ChatGPT. There's also Dolly uh, for text to image um, and a few others for text to code. So bottom line, you can start little by little either teaching yourself and use ChatGPT or whatever or bar to teach you how to use these tools or simply hire people in your team um encourage people in your team i'm sorry to use these tools and become better at them awesome all right buddy see you next time awesome sir see you take care Thank you for listening. Bye.